also known as PDX Guitar Freak, and welcome to my lesson on how to play the main guitar solo from Van Halen's Mean Street. Now before we get started, I think the most important thing you need to know at the beginning is that this song, as with most Van Halen songs, the guitar is tuned down one half step. Uh, so basically, E becomes E flat, A becomes A flat, D becomes D flat, etc. Uh, you should probably already know that if you're going to try and tackle this solo. Um, I'd say this one is uh, probably on the medium difficulty scale when it comes to Van Halen's uh, solos. Um, not a, it's not a very long solo. There's a couple tricky parts, but I'll take you through each one individually. You'll see the tabs on the screen, and I'll explain uh, some of the more tricky parts and give you some of my uh, suggestions on how to make it easier for you. Uh, in terms of music theory, uh, I like to talk about that in my in my lessons. Um, again, this being a Van Halen solo, you kind of kind of you got to throw all the rules out the door, right? But in general, this solo is based on, uh, for the most part, uh, A minor pentatonic, um, with the inclusion of a couple of notes. You've got um, the the major third. You've got the flatted fifth. Both very common notes to throw in uh, the minor pentatonic scale to make it a little more bluesy. Uh, and in addition. Um, there's a little bit of a Dorian um, vibe. I don't know if you'd call it a Dorian vibe, but some of the notes within the Dorian scale pop up, uh, uh, you know, B and F sharp. And so I'll talk a little bit about those uh, theoretical parts of the composition as we go through it. Let's go ahead and jump on into it. <laughs> Section 1 starts with a rake up to the 7th fret on the G string, and then what I like to call a big ass bend. We're talking about a two and a half step bend, which basically takes you from the 7th fret to the 12th fret, like this. That distance. But with pinch harmonics. Um, and uh, that's a very big bend. In fact, um, if you're playing on a, on a guitar that doesn't have a Floyd Rose, and you're not tuned down one half step, again, you should be, um, you might have some difficulty with that and you might want to be careful. You could break a string. What makes bending uh, that big um, easier is one, well, the guitar, when the guitar is tuned down, if there's less slack, you can bend a little bit further without worrying about that. Having a Floyd Rose, because what happens is when you make a, when you do a big bend, you can see that the Floyd Rose bre bridge um, kind of moves a little bit with it, and that provides a little bit of slack to compensate for the bend. So having those two things um, definitely helps. So again, you've, you're bending up and you're hitting a couple pinch harmonics before going down, and then back up a full step and back down. Okay, like this. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, it, it, it's when you try to play it that slow. Sometimes it's difficult because when you're when you're doing that super big bend and then you come down, back up a step, and back down. Sometimes you lose the note by then. So one thing you can do is right when you get to the ending of it, is hit the note again like this. You know, something like that to allow the note to keep going. Um, I've seen a lot of people struggle with that. And then finally, the end of that uh, section, there's a real basic kind of bluesy type of lick with a little uh, almost double stop built in there. And you can also pull off from the 7th fret G and B notes to the 5th fret G note there if you want. Either way. Section 2. In terms of the rake there, uh, what I do is I keep my ring finger on the 9th fret of the G string, my uh, middle finger on the 8th fret of the B, and then my index finger on the 7th fret of the E for the rake. And actually you could sound it out. I typically like to sound it out as opposed to... That's without sounding the notes. Well, you can hear harmonics there, but, but you could also sound the notes. As long as you're muting it and kind of raking it. Add some pinch harmonics to those next couple of notes, and then and on that last note with the eight, on the eighth fret of the uh, B string, you can you can add a uh, natural harmonic there if you want. In fact, that's why I've seen it tapped. I do have the official Van Halen 
uh, fair warning, songbook, tab book. But I said this before, I said it in my last um, lesson, tabs are not always right, okay? Eddie Van Halen does not sit down and read these tabs books to make sure they're authenticated. Even though it might be the official one, that's just because he gave his approval for the people to do it. He doesn't read it. So you really have to take tabs with a grain of salt. Use your ear, okay? And you'll figure out what's wrong with the tabs and what's not. Another thing that I do is I, I always take, down, take the song when I'm learning it and I slow it down using whatever software I, I might have so I can hear it in halftime, for example, and really listen to the notes. In fact, you can go out on YouTube and find isolated Van Halen guitar tracks, and I did that too for this solo, uh, just to make sure I wasn't missing anything, and really studied that one um, to give you what I've got here. Um, and so that sequence of notes, um, all of those notes fit within, um, when played over an A note, it kind of, they all fit in with the A Dorian scale, although that typical um, lick in that pattern sequence. Typically people don't play that when they're in Dorian. They might use that sequence of notes when they're over like a B minor Phrygian or E Aeolian, but within the context of this song it's it's um, it's A Dorian. So for the next section, here it is slowly. Uh, let's do it again. A few things I want to call out. One, I've seen people do it uh, up here. Instead of, see how I slide down from this position down here? A lot of people stay in this position when they do it. I'm not playing it right, but they stay up there and do it. Um, but for me, it's more comfortable to, to slide down and do it in this position down here. And uh, that kind of sounds like there's a slide in there anyway when I listen to it slowly. Either way, as long as you're playing the same notes, most people won't, won't even notice. Um, what do I want to call out? At one point, it, it speeds up just a tiny bit. Watch, it's really slow. See those those uh, last four notes? Kind of speeds it up a little bit, okay? And then the last thing I want to mention is you see where I have the 18th fret on the B string sliding to the 17th? That's really, you don't go like this. You're sliding into the 17th fret note. And I've seen people tab it where they actually play the 18th note. I've seen it done so many different ways. But when I slow down the original, like I said before, and I listen, I can hear him sliding into that 17th fret from the 18th. The note choices in that section, um, very much, almost all of them fit within the A Dorian scale, um, although he does add in the major third, um, uh, which you can add into Dorian, but usually people add it in in a more bluesy feel, like when you kind of go... But Eddie's throwing it in. It's just not a typical way. It's just it's very unorthodox. And then that 18th note, obviously, that's not found within Dorian. That would make the A minor scale more uh, pentatonic into more of an Aeolian. But again, don't focus on that. Just Eddie being Eddie and doing what he wants to do. The next part, uh, section four. This is one that. Uh, I don't enjoy a lot. It's funny. I, I was watching um, Doug Steele's lesson on this recently because I was curious on how he played it. And I play it differently than him, by the way. Um, and uh, nothing wrong with that. Everyone has their own interpretations. But I remember he, at this section, said he didn't like this part. And typically when he would play the solo, he'd improvise this section instead of doing it like this. And I get it because it's, it's, it's kind of tough. It's kind of weird. Uh, but basically, here it is slowly. And uh, the trick to this one is you, you want to have your index finger barred against the 14th fret over the B and G strings. You might touch the E, it's just naturally going to happen. That way you don't have to keep moving your index finger from string to string. Instead it's always there. So this next section has a very large bend at the beginning also, a two-step bend, which takes you from here to here. Um, before coming back down. Here it is slowly. Um, I'm not sure how much more to explain there. I mean, I think it's all written well in the tabs. Um, when he does this, um, 
it's, it's basically hits the 20th fret four times. Um, that took a while for me to get down in my head. You just gotta feel it. And then after he does the, after he does, he does that slide down and slide up. And um, you just kind of feel it. I know in the official tab book, they show that he goes down to the 12th fret, which would be the 7th in that scale, and then up to the major 3rd, which that's, that's pretty cool sounding if it's intentional, but I don't think Eddie did that intentionally. I think he was just moving his hand, um, but whatever. I think, I think as long as you just go up and down, you're going to get the right feel. Um, and the last lick, probably the easiest. Um, I'm not sure what there is to explain there, but obviously I'm barring my finger across the D, G, and B strings on the uh, 14th fret. It just makes it easier um, to do it that way. Um, and then you slide up to that 17th fret on the DGB and give it a vibrato and then go down. Um, you can palm mute parts of that. It sounds good palm muted, but that part's pretty straightforward. It shouldn't give you a lot of trouble. All right, well, that's my lesson on how to play the main guitar solo from Van Halen's Mean Street. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, um, I'll attempt to answer all of them as time allows. Uh, until next time, rock on. Thank you.